in the book of Hebrews, or Galatians, I mean, book of Galatians, in chapter number two. Chapter number two, real quickly today, and uh, we'll, we're going to hurry through this because we've got a shower this afternoon. And, uh, but the Word of God is so important, so important. And we talked about this this morning. It's amazing how God just brings things together. In Galatians chapter number 2, if you found your place, would you stand in honor of the Word of God if you can and will please. And the Word of God tells us in chapter 2, in verse number 16, and we'll read the remaining part of that chapter. And the Bible says, Knowing that a man is not justified by works of the law, but by faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by faith of Christ and not by works of the law, for by works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is there for Christ? Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the though the through the law, am dead to the law that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which, now, which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who, liveth, who loveth me and gave himself for me. I do not flusterate the grace of God, for if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Heavenly Father and Almighty God, bless the reading of the Word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. All right. The promises of God. That's what I want to talk to you about this morning. And, uh, just got a few things I want to look at as we look at this this morning. The promises of God are exact. They're exact and to the point. The thing about it is exciting and they're eternal for each and every man, woman, boy, and girl. Of all the promises, not one has ever failed. And as we begin to look at this, we, uh, we need to thank God, thank God uh, uh, for uh, what He has done, but there's no wonder they are called precious promises. When Jennifer was little, there was uh, got our little book that said, Precious Promises. And I don't know what she done with that. I don't know where it's at. Don't know. But uh, all the promises of God, I don't know how many of them are in this book, but it's called the Bible. And God has, it's called, no, see, I miss. It's called the Holy Bible. Amen. See how easy something can get by you. It's holy. It's a holy book of God because God is holy from beginning to end and there is no end. There was no beginning. So God has always been a holy God. And the thing about it is the promises are divinely and wholly faithful. And God is faithful. And the thing it says over in the book of Hebrews, in Hebrews, in chapter number 6, verse 17, 18, and 19. And the Word of God says this, and it's, it's easy for us to understand this. In verse 17, the Word of God says, wherein God willing, uh, wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was 
impossible for God to lie. We might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor to the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into uh, or entereth in into that within the veil. We enter into the veil, the veil that Christ Christ rent the veil from the top to the bottom. It was rent. No, no. See, the thing about it is Christ rent it from the bottom to the top. See, the thing about it, you and I had to get to God. You and I had no way to get to God. We had no way to in uh, 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 any earthly manner. But when God opened the veil himself on the cross of Calvary, then thank God I don't have to go through the preacher. I don't have to go through the deacon. I don't have to go through a priest. I don't have to go through Mary, Peter, nobody else. Brother, I can go straight to God. Brother, he opened the veil that you and I could go into the most holy, and that is the Lord God Almighty, but we've got to go through the Lord Jesus Christ. In 2 Peter, in chapter 3, in verse number 9, listen to what the Word of God says. God tells us something here that we need to understand. In verse number 9, the Word of God said that God is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants every, every man, woman, boy, and girl. It doesn't matter where you're from. I've said this so many times right here and down through my entire life. It doesn't matter where you're from. It just matters where you're going. That, that is all that matters. This world is not a place to live, but it's a place to get ready to live. It's a place to get ready to live in eternity. You're going to die one of these days. Uh, and the thing about it, all power is dependent on God. He is dependent uh, uh, in, independent of all the power. All the power that's ever been and all that's ever will be is contained in God Almighty. Uh, and you are dependent upon Him. Uh, you need to learn uh, to lean upon Him. Uh, when we learn to lean, brother, when we learn to trust, when we learn to live in Him, brother, the promises of God will become so much real. And another thing, all purity dependent on God, He is dependent of all purity. Hey, God is the only thing that is pure. Oh, you say this is pure or that is pure. And you'll see uh, uh, commercials, you'll see people say, uh, oh, look at this, it's pure water. Uh, or that is a pure stream. Uh, there's nothing pure except the pure love of God uh, and the pure power of His promise. Uh, God teaches us and tells us to live on and lean on Him. All perfection uh, is dependent upon God uh, and He is dependent uh, of all or independent uh, of all perfection. Uh, God, God uh, is perfect in every way. Uh, God is not uh, dependent on you, uh, but brother, I'm dependent on Him. Uh, brother, that's all uh, that I can uh, lean on uh, that's real. Uh, there's nothing real in this world uh, that you can really hold on to. Uh, there's nothing real in this world uh, that you can grab a hold of uh, and claim that it's really the real thing, uh, that it's, it's totally pure uh, outside of the will of God. Uh, number two, the promises depend on faith. Uh, brother, without your faith, uh, the thing about it, uh, God tells us in Ephesians uh, in chapter one uh, and in verse number 13, uh, listen to what the word of God says. Uh, 
He tells us it's plain. Uh, and he said here, uh, in whom uh, ye also trusted uh, after that you heard the word of truth. Uh, you have to hear the word of God in order to be saved. Uh, you can't be saved, uh, brother, uh, listening to the world. Uh, you can't be saved. People say, well, uh, I heard uh, all this song. Uh, this song got a hold of me. Uh, brother, I want to tell you something. Uh, until the Holy Spirit of God gets a hold of you, uh, you'll die lost and go to hell. Uh, that's in it. Now listen to the word of God. Uh, he said, in whom ye also trusted after uh, ye heard the word of truth, uh, the gospel, he said, the gospel uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. What he's talking about is the, God, the preached gospel of uh, of the Holy Spirit of God is what convicts your heart of sin. People say, well, I, God called me to sing. Show me in the Word of God where anybody was ever called to sing. That is a gift of God. Your, God has given you, a, give you new, a gift of singing. That is wonderful. God has given you a gift of playing an instrument. That is wonderful. But God calls me men to preach the word of God and that's the calling that is in the word of God but he said here he said the gospel of your salvation in whom also after after the gospel after the word of God is preached he said you believed and you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise Brother, there's another promise of the Word of God. God said after the Word was preached and after you believed, then you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. Then God give you eternal life. That's as plain as anybody can make it. And if you don't have that, you're lost without God. You're lost and you'll never go to heaven, friend, believing anything else because it's not obedience to the law, but it's faith. It's not observance to rituals or something that you believe in, but it's faith. And it's not the order of religion or a type of an organization that you belong to, but it's faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that will take you to heaven through the promise of God. All right, number three, brother, it's a promises are designed for forgiveness. The promises, they were never designed for anything else. God didn't promise, a they were never designed to give you a new car. They were never designed to give you a new house. They were never designed to set you up as a wealthy millionaire. They were designed to keep you from going to hell. That was totally what they were designed for. In Ephesians, in chapter 2, look what the Word of God is telling us here. In chapter 2, and what he is saying here in verse number 12 and 13, and he says very plainly, he says that at the time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in this world. But now look, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off, are made nigh, what? By the blood of Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Brother, you're made uh, in Christ. You are adopted into Christ through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ after you hear the word of God after you confess your sins, after you come openly and come and confess that you're a Christian before the world and you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then God said, 
if you're saved, then God will seal you with the Holy Spirit of promise and God will give you eternal life. Amen. Brother, it's what it takes. It takes the blood of the Lamb of God and it takes you confessing that you're lost without God and you're a sinner going to hell and He is the only way out of here. Brother, that, that is all that salvation, that's what He made a promise. That's what He died for. But the thing about it is, what about in Colossians? In Colossians, what the Word of God is telling us something. If we'll let it, let the Word of God just speak to us and tell us something, He will, He will really, really let us know. If I can find it here. In Colossians, in chapter 2, in chapter 2 of Colossians, verse 20. Now the Bible says this. He said here, he said, Where if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though ye living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not. Why, which all are to perish with the using, after the commandments and the doctrines, which things have indeed, a show of wisdom in the in worship and humility and neglecting of the body, but in any honor of the satisfying of the flesh. The thing about this thing, look in chapter 3 in verse number 1. What is he saying? If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Now look at verse 2 and down through four. Set your afflictions or affection on things above, not on things on this earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid in Christ. Your sins are gone. Amen. 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 Thank God. I, when God forgets, God wipes them out, and everybody else ought to forget and keep their mouth shut. Amen. Amen. All right. And he said then, he said, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him, what? In glory. Hallelujah to God. If God wipes them out, brother, you've got no business bringing up anything about anybody. But the thing about it, that we have to do this. All right? Last, but certainly not least, the promises are a deadline for the future. And the thing about it is, he said in 2 Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians in chapter 1 and verse number 18, what is he talking about? He's telling, he's telling us some things that we need to really understand. And he said, But as God be true, our word toward you was not yea nor nay. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you, by us, even by me, Silvanus, Timotheus, that was Timothy, it was not yea nor nay, but in him was yea. But now look at this. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. What is he talking about? He's saying, let the church say amen that are saved. Uh, let them holler amen. Uh, let them glorify God. Uh, let them praise Him to the promises of God. Last point. The promises are delightful to all of His followers. To all of His followers. This promise is for you. 2 Peter 1.4. Look at this. 2 Peter 1.4. Oh, I'll tell you, I love this. I love it. I love it, I love it. And he said, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great promises, precious and great prom and promises, that by these are you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We've escaped it. 
just accepting the promises of God. And you can go on and read the rest of it. But to think we are promised Christ will return. We're next promise. We're promised a reservation. It's already made. Thirdly, and this is it, we're promised a resurrection. A resurrection. God said, I'm coming to get you. I ain't sending nobody after you. I'm coming myself. The Lord himself shall return. The Lord himself is coming to get you. Let's stand. Let's stand. The Lord is our hope and our promise. Heavenly Father, as we bow before you on this Lord's day, Lord, I just want to thank you, Father, for all your precious promises. I want to thank you, Lord, for the precious and holy word of God. I want to thank you, Lord, for this holy book. I want to thank you for the holy cover. Lord, that they saw fit to put upon it the Holy Bible. Lord, when I pick it up, it's a holy book. And Lord, I count it so. I count it a privilege to read your holy Bible. I count it a privilege, Lord, to hold it dear to my heart. I count your promises true and faithful and pure. And Lord, I pray, God, if there's one here today, Lord, that don't know the purity and the power and the love, Lord, of the promises of God, Lord, that you have, every one of them in this book will come true if they've not already. Lord, if they don't know, today they might know. If you're here today with heads bowed, if you're here today and you've never accepted the Word of God as your precious promise of eternal life, maybe today would be the day you'd say, Father, I just want you to really be my Father. Today, I want them promises for me. It's not my sister, not my brother, but Lord, it's just me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Word of God. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done for us. And now, Father, I thank you for what you're going to do. Lord, thank you for the gifts, Lord, from this precious church. God, God, we're, we're having a hard time here at the church. God, we, we, God, we need, and there's things we do need. And Lord, I pray, dear God, that you'll help us through and God, I know you will. But Lord, we thank you and we praise you. God, you know the valleys that we're going through. And God, we know the tunnel at the end, there's sunshine. And God, we know the day is going to bring a brand new start. So Lord, I pray, dear God, for those requests to prayer, every need, everything, God, that stands in need of prayer, we ask you, God, to meet that need today. Lord, Sister May, Sister Shirley, Sister Liz brought a point to our attention for prayer. And Lord, I pray for that situation. Lord, others that are sick, Sister Peggy, talking about that young child. Lord, you can do it. You can do it. Lord, we thank you for Brother Jake, God, going. He didn't have to do what he did, him and Sister Stephanie. They didn't have to. We thank you. Thank you for Brother Michael. We thank you for my wife and Sister May. They didn't have to do, God, what they did, but we thank you that they did. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done. Now take care. And God, I pray that you bless faith. And God, when it comes time to birth that child into this world, Lord, make it easy. Make that little help. Oh, dear God, give us a healthy great-grandchild. Oh, dear God, all the toes and fingers, and Lord, that little life, Lord, make it hold. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.